Have you looked at the prices for a 12-ounce bag oh, of no. free ring coffee? <laughs> no. Are they pricey? <laughs> I was I I was a little skeptical of his coffee exploits to begin with, uh, because it says it's it promises to be coffee that fuels Holy dreams, crud. which seems to be a little bit am- ambitious. Uh, he says he wants to capture the spirit of the American West with flavors like American dirt. And I don't know if you've ever heard about cowboy coffee, but cowboy coffee was never really known yeah. for being like the tastiest of coffees. That's kind of like improvised coffee out yeah. of the range. So My papa I don't know what he's made... going for there, but a 12-ounce bag cow- of Kohlhauser's free rain coffee will set you back $15.99 plus shipping. I'm going to start this episode by admitting I I um, did not watch season... Uh, episode one of season two i thought we were doing a fun little um i know where is the cast now addison went from being over prepared season one to now i'm starting behind um behind the rest of everyone so i'm so sorry billy i must admit my flaws (laughs) you came to film a yellowstone podcast without having watched yellowstone is what you're saying technically Yes, but I did come ready for the second half of this podcast, which I thought was going to be the full podcast. So I came prepared. I wasn't here to talk about Summer I Turned Pretty or The Bachelor. Right. No, I, I had my head in the game. It was just in the wrong lane. <laughs> well, you got some major catching up to do because not only does are you behind an episode, there's two episodes of Yellowstone airing on CBS on Sunday, this coming Sunday. And Bass Reeves, Lawman Bass Reeves prepares. So clear your calendar. Hopefully you've got nothing to do your first week back in Texas because this is where you are. This is who you are now. Yep. If you need me, uh, you know where to find me. I will be just staring at a television. Okay. Well, since I did not watch it and I'm sure some other people, you know, may be listening to this podcast and didn't hear it either. Billy, I will let you do kind of the heavy lifting on season two, episode (laughs) one. What are the main important takeaways? Well, the most important thing here was not the resolution to John's Dutton, to John Dutton's health crisis. You missed that. Was not Beth talking about building a 200 mile moat around the Yellowstone with her boss, Bob. It was not the introduction of a new character named Cowboy, who apparently knows Walker. Cowboy, super fascinating character. It was the Bunkhouse Boys. There was a lot of Bunkhouse Boys in this episode, specifically a big fight at the bar, and Rip literally lets a bowl loose in the middle of a bar. This is a classic Yellowstone scene, and I want to point out that our girl Lainey Wilson kind of is right in the middle of this scene because it's her song. This is the first time a Lainey Wilson song is used on Yellowstone. It's the backdrop for this scene. What happens is the Yellowstone boys all go to the bar after a night out. Actually, this new character, Cowboy, convinces them all to play cowboy poker, which is when a bunch of cowboys sit in the bull ring around a table, and then they let a bull loose. Last person sitting at the table wins. Uh, Avery ends up winning this game of chicken. Heck yeah. Not your kind of game? (laughs) I had never actually even heard of it, but I've, yeah, uh, yeah interesting. <laughs> so after that, they decide to go to the bar, and uh, Jimmy and Avery are actually having a pretty good time. It kind of looks like they're maybe going to kind of get along together pretty well. Um, but someone tries to hit on Jimmy. Jimmy basically tells him where to shove it. Starts a huge fight, and all the Bunkhouse boys get pretty roughed up. I mean, they're all nursing their wounds. Rip finds out about it, loads a bulb into the back of the trailer, opens the double wide doors at the bar at the bar and the bowl just sort of saunters in and and it's brilliant how this is shot because there's this quiet in the bar before the Uh chaos where people start to realize there's a giant multi-thousand pound animal (laughs) just a few feet away from them (laughs) then they all come pouring out of the doors of the bar and uh, jimmy and the bunkhouse boys identify which ones beat them up and they start to beat them up with baseball bats Really kind of get their uh, vengeance there. Yeah, it really takes a turn there, Addison. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It becomes kind of like this wonderful revenge. Like, oh, wow. You're all serious about this. The one thing is Walker will not fight here. He refuses to fight for Rip. And that's going to be a problem later on. So, so far, Walker's not the antagonist as much. 
he isn't. And you really start to get a feel for kind of how reluctant he is now to be part of the Yellowstone, especially as he's talking to this new guy named Cowboy. Cowboy is a day worker who comes traveling up to the Yellowstone. And um, apparently he and Walker know each other from a past life. So they sort of talk. Walker tries to tell him this ranch is not like any other he's ever seen before and he wants to leave. And we're starting to get a feeling that maybe Walker is going to try to find a way out on his own. Hmm. That's foreshadowing if you've not yet seen all of season two. Here's the question, though. Couldn't Rip have gotten in trouble for letting a bull loose in a restaurant or a bar that's not his? Like, let's let's put that into current day. You thinking that Rip should have to answer to the law to a certain degree? Yeah, here? a little bit. I mean, I can't go downtown Austin and let a bull loose in <laughs> broken spoke and think, oh, I'm just not, I'm going to get away with that. Like, there's not going to be any repercussion. Well, the reason that Jimmy doesn't think it's going to be any issue when he tells this guy to, to screw off is because he literally says, we're with the Yellowstone. No one's going to mess with us. I think Rip kind of has the same ethos and he even tells the barkeep, hey, you should have given me a call or let you had your uh, bodyguards break up this fight before my before my guys got tuned up. So I don't think he's all that worried about it. Um, they get the bull back. They retrieve the bull because Lord knows they're not going to leave their merchandise in the middle of the bar. Right. But, uh, right. I, I wouldn't expect any repercussions from this particular incident. Were there any don't worry about it? in episode one well there was a lot of kind of small scale plot advances i guess you could call them this is like the tightening of the wrench a little bit in a number of different platforms first of all we find out that jamie is having some pretty major regrets about some decisions he's made with christina um they start with Mm. them the morning they're kind of cohabitating together And she's getting ready for work. And Jamie's starting to have, trying to think of the best way to phrase this without sounding like a chauvinistic pig. But he's starting to realize that maybe he wasn't leading with his head. And he's starting to regret that. And it's just a really familiar look (laughs) for Jamie (laughs) as like, he's trying to sort of be the nice guy to his new girlfriend and also sort of thinking, ooh, how do I get out of this relationship? And she's my campaign (laughs) manager. Uh, so that starts there. We learn a little bit more about Rainwater's plan to annex the land from that he's buying from Dan Jenkins into the reservation. Um, there's a pretty good conversation between Beth and Bob um, about uh, buying land around the Yellowstone Ranch, which is something they talk about in future seasons as well. That's sort of the start of that. Uh, and um beth sort of challenges bob to do it and there's just a lot of beth and bob love at this point in the relationship so that a uh, question i have for you is we leave season uh one with dan jenkins being hung so is dan jenkins alive oh yeah i guess i should have mentioned that because i knew that was gonna be the case <laughs> uh, <laughs> well I mean, oh, right <laughs> well i mean it, I guess I sort of operate in this world where I assume that even if people have, are, are watching episode to episode, maybe they're, they're Google searching ahead, and, and that is a little bit unfair. But yeah, we never see Dan Jenkins get cut down, but he apparently gets cut down because actually John has a visit with him in a, gotcha. um, a, a little cafeteria, and they chat, and he says, next time I'm not going to let anybody cut you down. So yeah, Dan Jenkins lives, um, and he's fine. He's still going forward with his business plan. He doesn't seem to care one iota Have about remorse. Uh, yeah. the, th- the threats. Yeah. We did get a, a, a pretty good Monica scene. And, and I think at this episode, I'm reminded why people don't like Monica because she's, okay. she's just such a Debbie downer and she really is in this. And I want to be nice about this, but she goes into the university to try to get that university job that was offered to her. And the professor okay. tells her, well, we've already allocated that money for Native American studies. We can give you an American history job talking about Columbus. And, of course, she has some issues with Columbus, as she should. She, I think she refers to him as the person who introduced genocide to uh, a new continent for the very first time. Um, but he gives her the job. 
doesn't even really seem all that happy about it. Like she kind of went in there looking for the job and then she kind of makes it sound like she's doing him a favor for the job. Like you would think like a thank you and a handshake would be appropriate. And it, right. it kind of ends. She's just sort of just down about the whole experience. Just like staring at him with these long silent stares. And it's like, girl, you just got a university job. You should be pretty happy. Go celebrate. Get a glass of wine or something. Dang. It's, um, it's almost like nothing is good enough. This is the we're, Monica we're living in. She she's 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 giving very Debbie Downer vibes at this point. Now I understand why people started not liking Monica. I mean, I understood why I didn't like Monica at the end, but obviously I didn't start as early. Do you want me to spoil the John Dutton health resolution for you? Yeah, I think you need to be for the sake of everyone else who's already watched it and done their due diligence. And okay. yes, spoil it. So at the beginning of the episode, um, there's a vet trailer, a veterinarian mm-hmm. trailer on the ranch. Because there's a lot of cowboy things happening in this episode. It looks like they're giving the bulls or the, the cattle vaccines or maybe doing some castration or some impreg- impregnate, some, some impregnating. I'm not sure what kind of stuff they're doing specifically with them but there's just a lot of cowboy stuff at one point jimmy has his hand really deep up a bull's or a a, a cow's butt uh <laughs> that's just a lot going I on i ain't changing like, my profession anytime soon <laughs> yeah yeah like the remember the piece of equipment remember when he goes down to the four sixes ranch and he yes. meets his 2b fiance and she gives yes. him the piece of equipment that makes another reoccurrence And Jimmy's going to be charged. Jimmy and Avery are going to be in charge of operating that piece of equipment. Like, it's just a very, it's a hands-on episode, you might say. All that said, they get to the end. And John, John is sort of just watching this all happen. And he he faints. He goes down to the ground. He's about to pass out. They scoop him up and bring him into the vet trailer. And she whips up. She has a a scanning tool of some sort, an x-ray or a CAT scan or something. And he admits... He has colon cancer. He thinks it's the colon cancer. And she says, John, if it was the colon cancer, you'd be shitting blood, not vomiting. Your Mm. blood wouldn't be coming from your mouth. It ends up being an ulcer that's ruptured. He has 20 minutes until he's going to bleed out. So they have to cauterize a ruptured ulcer in a vet trailer with no anesthesia because everything she has is for cattle. That would kill him. So they have to cut him open there with nothing and then repair it. And then they call the helicopter and off he goes. It's grisly. It's a grisly scene. Wow. It also I sort of am answers. Processing. It answers a key point of confusion here about John Dutton's health. Because I've I've kind of battled with people about his cancer. Because some people would say that his cancer came back and he had cancer twice. I've had other people say he's never had cancer. It was just the ruptured ulcer. So he had cancer, and the cancer was removed, and then he got this ulcer that ruptured. So two different medical episodes. He thought it was the same, but they ended up being two very different things that he had to deal with. A lot of confusion about that. Yeah, yeah, confusion. And poor guy, it's like once he's down, it's you're still you have another thing that you're dealing with. Hmm. I think he's pretty good health wise for the rest of this season. If I'm not mistaken, like. Things get a little prickly there at the end of season three for him in some pretty high profile ways. But um, season two, I think he's in pretty good shape. Good good shape. Um, Yeah, if I'm right, if I'm I'm remembering right, that's the case. This is a good episode, Addison. Dang. Well, I am excited to watch all the episodes I need to watch. (laughs) Are we going to have to go back and catch up again next week? Like, you're like, oh, I got more questions about episode one. Yeah, you'll have something. Yeah, I probably will. But I'll, I'll somehow finagle it into season, I mean, episode two and three. Don't don't worry. I'm debating if I want to change the trivia question. Because there's something else that I want to talk about. But you know what? I think I'm going to wait till next week. Okay. Because the other thing I want to talk about was going to be my trivia question. But we can talk about it next week after the trivia but it's, it, it was the ultimate one of these like i'm finding now that taylor sheridan planted all of these seeds super early that bloomed much much later and there was another really really big one in this episode as it pertains to monica um 
And uh, we can talk about that next week, though. It'll be the trivia question here when we get to it in a few minutes. Do we do you have more to say about season? I mean, episode one, or do we want to do where is the cast now? Let's talk about the cast. the cast, the cast members of now. I just focused on Yellowstone. Did you go expand to the whole Yellowstone universe? No, wait. Okay. You just, fo- I just focused on the Yellowstone cast. Is that what you're saying? Right. Okay. Great. 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 So you didn't like, look I did not like Harrison Ford. It. No, 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 well, no. 1923. Okay. 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 No. I know you keep really close tabs no, on. I, I just. Um, on Spencer. Michelle Randall. I know where he is day to oh. day. Yeah. 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 Brand- yeah. Brandon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> actually, he was just in Venice Beach. I don't know. Actually, yeah. uh, I don't think he really posts on social media. I don't follow him. And I think it was because the fact that I'm like, oh, you don't really post. I'm not interested. Michelle Randolph, though, big fan. If you're listening to this, please come on our podcast. <laughs> I've noticed, anyway. I've learned kind of recently that there's some country artists. I, like, we knew some country artists are big fans, but I found out Ronnie Dunn's a big fan of Yellowstone. Darius really? Rucker, uh, Thomas Rhett. I knew that. Ernest is a big fan. Uh, we knew Carrie Underwood was. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of a lot of artists who watch just about every week. You know my idea. <laughs> uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Don't spoil it. Let's get some new episodes of Yellowstone <laughs> no, I, before I'm we start not, bringing our a, our our A list ideas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this is a cast oh, catch up, right? Yes. This is we're catching what up on the cast up, members. What I'm up to. Yes, what they've been up to. I'm kind of thinking we need to save Rip, a.k.a. Cole Hauser, for the end. Because he's my favorite okay. of what he's been up to. So I think I think we cover other people first, and then him, if you're down. Okay. Well, well you start. Go ahead. Okay. I'll start with Luke Grimes. He's probably one of the cast members who's been doing the most. He's now transferred. Transferred. <laughs> That's not the correct word. He sang, I think, did he ever sing on the show? No. He never sang uh, He had Yellowstone, songs. He? His songs were used, but I don't think his okay. character actually sings. Okay. Well, he's ventured into his country music career um, as an artist. He just recently put out on October 20th, so quite literally 10 days ago, his first EP called Pain Pills or Pews. Um, I, I didn't get to see him during CMA Fest, but I knew that he played in Nashville um, at Luke, I mean, not Luke Bryan, uh, Old Red, which is Blake Shelton's mm. bar. Yep. So I've never gotten to see him live, but he has a very, I'd say his sound is very, would you say almost like a Zach Bryan or it like has some grit and rasp to it? It's more Americana than like yes. what you might think of as country. Um, Zach Bryan's yes. a pretty good comparison, but, um, I did a sort of a, a real time first reaction review of this EP on my Twitter page at Billy Dukes. And I, I think it's it's decent, but he's still not quite there yet. Like some of the songs are pretty good. A couple are like the first song, No Horse to Ride, is a decent song. His vocals aren't great. It's not a great introduction to his vocals, which kind of shows his limitations there. But then he comes with a song called Hold On that's much more engaging. The arrangement's really good. A super strong steel guitar. Um, there's a Nicole Galleon co-write called Ghost of Who We Are that is a, mm. a really strong ballad. But then it ends with a couple that are kind of like, meh, average at best. So I think there's yeah. still some growth to do there from Luke. I wonder if art, I mean, if actors and actresses think... Because I know, I feel like, gosh, Disney Channel is like this, where every Selena Gomez, and I'm not downing any of these people, are like a Miley Cyrus. Yes, I think that they can sing now, but I feel like Disney just pumped people. Like, okay, if you're an actress, you all of a sudden become a singer, and whether you're good or not. uh, I wonder if actors feel that same way of like, oh, I did, like, my character on Yellowstone's really, like, I have such a fandom that is that going to translate into music that they will follow whether you're good or not? I don't know. I think if like Luke had seen my comments or had heard uh, that review of his EP, he might have thought it was a pretty fair. Like, I feel like he is 
like he he would understand that he has a ways to go. Like he's he's yeah. still new to this business. He's getting back into it. Like he's not a brilliant. Like this is gonna that's his B gig right now. He's not a brilliant singer songwriter, right. but he's working hard at it. And there's a lot of potential for him to get better. Like I, I think he's honest about who he is at this juncture. There, that's my takeaway from him. Were he seems you, like a pretty humble dude. Were you? I can't remember. I know Evan Paul with our Taste of Country Nights radio show interviewed him were, was that in studio or was that zoom no that was a zoom interview okay i didn't know if you were part of that i know i know he talked no, no. music because we mentioned that um on this podcast yeah. um yeah we have a music centric interview that we're just kind of sitting on with him for now um he also has a tour coming in november yes i actually wrote that down yes uh his wife on the show, Monica, a.k.a. Kelsey Asbiel. She's really not been up to much uh, other than she made her Met Gala debut back in May. But that's been a hot minute. I couldn't really find anything that she... Oh, has she been up to something? She is going to be in a movie called Don't Move. It's a oh, horror okay. thriller currently in post-production. And it's got some decent names attached to it. Um, Oh, I think Ramy Productions is Sam Ramy. Yep, indeed it is Sam Ramy, who's a well-known actor. Um, I thought there was a well a well-known co-star with her as well. She's starring oh Finn Whitrock, who was an American Horror Story and a couple of other different things. Uh, there's a trailer out for it now. There's no date on when that's going to be released. But yeah, she has made a, a horror thriller called Don't Move. And I think if you follow her on Instagram, you'll see some of the photos and takeaways from that. Um, it looks good. I mean, the movie, I'm not a big horror guy, so I don't know about the movie. But yeah, the, certainly the, the the pictures I saw look very good. I don't know why I quite literally. It's on her Instagram. Anyways, we are, won't spend that time doing that, but I didn't see it. You know who else Anyways. has a uh, a movie that is out that yeah. is actually really good? Uh, Kelly Riley, Beth Dutton. Um, yes. She stars in a movie called A Haunting in Venice. Uh, Kenneth mm -hmm. Branagh is also with her. If you are a, like a Agatha Christie type reader, you'll recognize the name Hercule, Hercule Perot. I never figured out how to pronounce that. He's the star of the movie, or he it's one of his detective movies. Uh, Hercule Perot is a detective. Um, Kelly Riley is one of the stars of the movie. Looks, it is a super thriller. No way my wife will ever watch it with me. Um, but it's gotten good reviews, seventy five percent so far at Rotten Tomatoes. And I can tell you, my parents went and saw it. They said it was tremendous. Oh, okay, good review from the parents. <laughs> John What's and Carol. interesting is, yeah. Oh my gosh, wait, we needed to wait back to. <laughs> Did you say Don and Carol? Is that their names? <laughs> John and Carol. Oh, John. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh speaking of movies i can't believe i forgot about this luke grimes and i and i did watch this uh it's on netflix it's called happiness for beginners uh ellie kemper plays in it as well anyways i loved it it was it's the story about um this gal she goes on this wilderness trip it's supposed to where you go and find yourself and uh you know is currently i don't know she was married i don't know if she's in the i think she's in the middle of a divorce and kind of her best guy friend that she's known ever since growing up uh, kind of plays, you know, how she's always seen him through this entire time is just the kid that she's grown up knowing. Well, somehow he comes on this trip with her, not intentionally with her. Like he, when she shows up, he's also there. And anyways, they end up falling in love and yada, yada, yada. But that is, he plays the, the character. I can't remember his name, but it's by Luke Grimes. Happiness for Luke beginners. Grimes sort like of has he has a face for a rom com, doesn't he? Doesn't he look very he, Hallmark movie? I don't know Hallmarky, but a good how do I best describe? Like Luke has good kind of puppy dog eyes. Does that make sense? Where he can be made yeah. kind of sultry in this like sexy, but then at the same time can be like oh. I don't know how I'm trying to describe it, but he has just those eyes that can go both ways. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. Uh, okay, so that's three pretty good movies for people to see. Um, I'm out of movie, but there are some people uh, that are in some other 
Taylor Sheridan related shows coming. Well, no, actually, Jefferson White was in a movie, Eileen. He plays Buck oh. Warren. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also a kind of a uh, thriller as well. And I found it interesting that Kelly, Jefferson, and Kelsey, <laughs> minus Luke, they're all playing more dark series. Like, I wonder, like, are we typecasting? Is it typecasting, though? I think that's the correct wording. Where you kind yeah, of peg yourself, Jimmy, like, you know, Kelly. I couldn't see Kelly Jimmy Riley in, ain't playing in a thriller. A romance. No, no, that's true. Well, not Jimmy, Jefferson White. <laughs> Look up after He's, Eileen, and he plays Buck Warren. Uh, Kelly Riley is in one of my favorite series of all time. She's in the Sherlock Holmes movies with Robert Downey Jr. Oh, really? And I love her in those. Huh. Yeah, she plays um, Watson's wife. Huh. In those. You know who is mm-hmm. MIA? Freckin' Merrill. I don't know what he's up to. I couldn't figure it out. And Wes Bentley has kind of disappeared. Yeah, he's also disappeared. Mm-hmm. Jen Landon. Uh, Ian Bowen. Oh, well, Can I do okay. Ian Bowen we'll first? Ian. Mm. As always. Chef's kiss. Well, I, you know, Ian Bowen, a very handsome man, and... You may love him more or dislike him more if oh, you checked out at Ian Bowen on Twitter. He is a very active political commentator on Twitter. Um, I think he says he's not on one side of the political aisle or the other. I think an objective look, though, would say that he's pretty... He, he leans more conservative, although he tends to trash the Republicans and the Democrats. Um, but he's right in there. Like he, he's giving his opinions on like any issue of the day. And then sometimes he's even sort of inventing his own issues. Um, he's a bit of a firebrand. I think you might call him on, on social media, mm-hmm. bringing things up, but then he'll mix in like the occasional sports take. Uh, so Ian Bowen, I think needs to get back to work is what it is. I, I, you know, I'm not saying that he shouldn't have these hot takes on, on politics and sports. But the man obviously needs a job right now because he's just, just, he's swallowed up in social media. Like, someone go f- check on him. Colby, Denim Richards, go do a welfare check on your boy. Colby. Because, <laughs> uh, it's, well, he, it's a lot right now from him. <laughs> I'm not, you are like Mr. Avid Twitter. Like, that is like, if I put, I would peg you with the social media, it would be Twitter. Mine would be Instagram. And for that reason, Ian Bowen's Instagram is just different. Like he's talking about, he's big into uh, the charity that's Blue Star Families, and it helps inform the public about just military families and how, you know, they're constantly moving and what that's like for them and helping them plug into communities. So that's what he's up to on Instagram. I would guess that on a scale of one to 10, if we were to ask Ian Bowen how prepared he is for Doomsday, He'd be at, oh. at about an eight. Probably, yeah. Yeah, so that... Probably. I mean, good. Maybe leaning on conspiratorial is all I'm saying. <laughs> I wish that he would... I would love to meet him. Yes. Maybe he would... As, as yeah. would I. <laughs> For different reasons. J- go ahead. Jen... <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Jen Landon... Well, I don't know if she's in any TV movies coming up. She is selling her Venice townhome for a whopping $1.8 million. If you wanted to 1,900 that. square feet. So you can do the math on that. Uh, that's about the size of my house, and it is not worth $1.8 million. <laughs> <laughs> also love that she has been, it looked like, this summer, she, and I don't know the terminology for it because it's not a camper and it's not a tent. It's one of the the campers that can go on the bed of a truck. And it looks like she's been doing some solo oh, gotcha. traveling this past oh, summer. Nice. Which, nice, nice, Yeah. Adventurous soul. I don't think I could solo travel for long term like that. I, I need a buddy, but right. good for her. Kevin Costner has had an active summer. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, we, we kind of know all about Kevin Costner. Kevy, do you want to do you want to touch that one? Uh, he got a divorce. You might have heard a little bit about it. It was pretty high profile. His lawyers ended up taking his now ex-wife to school in the courtroom, and he got most of what he wanted. 
She's still got a ton of money and alimony and his kids are well taken care of, as is she. But on a better, uh, from better news from Kevin and more professional news, his band, The Modern West, has started to do a little bit of touring here and there. And then also, as of earlier this month, early October, he released the dates and a short teaser for his new film series, Horizon. We now know Horizon. that part one of that is going to drop on June 28th of next year. And part two is going to drop on August 16th. This is in theaters. The teaser was only like 20 seconds, but I was intrigued. I was engaged, Mm -hmm. you know, very much building on what we saw him as in Yellowstone. I think it's for a similar fan base, but it looks strong. Also, sorry, y'all, if you can hear, can you hear that noise, Billy? Hopefully not. Anyways, my, uh, my laundry's on rinse cycle. (laughs) I just didn't realize how loud it was. <laughs> it's just a, but a anyways, quiet so gushing. Sorry. So sorry, you. everyone. <laughs> if you hear a noise, it's, uh, the lunch room's not even close. But anyways, uh, the last person that I have on my list, you might have more, is Ryan Bingham. He's been in the country music, I'd say mm, Americana scene for a minute. He's been there. He's been there for a while. Uh his last EP was out in August called Watch Out for the Wolf. I don't think he's done. Oh. I think he's recently announced a tour. Uh, wait, no, not a tour. He's performing somewhere. Let me look back up. Luke Grimes and he, Ryan Bingham would be a great tour <laughs> pairing. Totally. That would be for a lot of reasons. Like Luke, musically, mm. like they're very in sync. Um, and obviously, they share a similar fan base. They could probably sell some larger venues. They should do that, actually. Yeah, no, I think that'd be really smart. And someone who, I think, like a good crew would be like a Corey Kent, Corey Asbury, who's more Christian's side of things. But him and I think Ryan seem to be friends, at least via social media. Oh, is that I right? I think that whole crew would do, yeah. Or no, sorry, it's Luke Grimes that he's good friends with. I knew he was commenting hardcore on some of the, I don't know, maybe he's just a fan. But anyways, yeah, I don't have You're anything right else up on for. The mic- uh, oh, all right. You were oh, right up on the microphone. I thought you Sorry. had another epiphany you were about no. to bring me. But no, it's just. Oh, no, wait, well, I, I have two more short ones, then you can get to Cole Hauser. Okay. Does that work? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Mo, uh, Mo Brings Plenty, who plays uh, Mo on Yellowstone. He's going to be in the new Bass Reeves movie uh our television show we've talked about that starts on sunday on paramount plus and gil birmingham is going to be in the next wind river movie wind river the next chapter he was the in the original as well and if you're a fan of yellowstone you might recognize wind river this is kind of like the movie that taylor sheridan made prior to yellowstone but it sort of connects him to this series Uh, a number of cast members were in it including gil birmingham and kelsey as bill eat all right, cool Hauser. Outside of uh, recently being in my hometown of Austin, Texas for the Formula One race, uh, he, which I don't know, does he live in Texas? He must. And okay. because yeah, well, of what he's got lined up um, professionally. Y'all, he just opened in San Angelo, Texas, a coffee shop. It's called... Uh, Free rain coffee. Miss- okay, there you go. I was like, I I just put F R E, and I was like, what was that supposed to say? Uh, free rain coffee company. But it gets even cooler. He has his own coffee brand. Like it's not only a coffee shop; it's a coffee brand, and he has six different blends of mm-hmm. coffee. He's a coffee connoisseur, and I just didn't know it. Have you looked at the prices for a twelve ounce bag oh, of no. free rain coffee? <laughs> No. Are they pricey? <laughs> I was I I was a little skeptical of his coffee exploits to begin with. Uh because it says oh, it's okay. it promises to be coffee that fuels Holy dreams. Crud. Which seems to be a little bit am- ambitious. Uh he says he wants to capture the spirit of the American West with flavors like American dirt. And I don't know if you've ever heard about cowboy coffee, but cowboy coffee was never really known yeah. for being like the tastiest of coffees. That's kind of like improvised coffee out yeah. of the range. So My papa I don't know what he's made... going for there, but a 12-ounce bag cow- of Kohlhauser's free-rain coffee 
will set you back fifteen dollars and ninety nine cents plus shipping. But look at the, look how beautiful this man looks. Ah. You know that's photoshopped. That he's he's not standing. He's probably standing on some green screen somewhere, and they just threw a couple. That's of That's him, though. In front of him. That's him. You can't Photoshop that. That's all I'm talking about. I don't care about it. It's a gray background. What kind of coffee do you buy get, at the house? Get up and get after it. Uh, I just do plain cold brew. Okay, but is <laughs> that a brand that name? Girl. Uh, chameleon yeah, cold brew. Or chameleon no, cold it's, brew. I don't I'm know. Familiar if, with that. I don't know if Folders makes cold brew, but uh, chameleon cold brew, shout out chameleon. It is Austin local. Are you looking at okay, that? I'm definitely going to check the price of that right now to see how bougie Addison okay. is with her cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Amazon. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Are you getting yeah, yeah, this yeah. podcast on. more than me? What what is happening? Hold on, hold 1717. On. <laughs> I knew that was going to come out. Bottle of it. Okay, step one. Number one, I don't drink it every day. Number two, you have to dilute it. Number three, I do not buy it full price. I get it when it only goes on sale. If not, I don't drink it. So let me How let many, me like preface all of that. It is in, and it I is only concentrated. Do, it is concentrated. I think there's serve, normally you get eight servings. Yes, and normally I won't do a full serving just you know for heart palpitations and all the above. I'll do half of the serving. So really, I get sixteen out of it. That's a very bougie <laughs> coffee, Addison. I've had, it is bougie. I've it is no. It, it it is bougie, and I don't drink it all the time. If I'm doing normal, I'll still do like cold brew, but literally just whatever is the cheapest at HEB. It's your version what? of Publix. HEB is like y'all's Publix. Gotcha. I'll do what's just my like version. What's your brand. version of what's your version of Kroger? <laughs> Your version of Aldi. Do they have those there in Austin? Like, what's the, the, the save a lot? What's the save a lot coffee? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. You, uh, it, Three kids. <laughs> no. And yes, uh, uh, Kroger and, uh, well, believe me, once, let's just say uh, my chameleon will not always be a thing once something's changed. But um, uh, there's Kroger and Aldi here in Texas, but uh, HEB is still like they have their own brand of stuff, which I think Kroger does too. Uh, but their coffee ends up being pretty cheap. They're cold brew. It's like their own label. I had recently started splurging on Javelia coffee and I was feeling pretty good about myself, but I am nowhere near oh. free reign coffee prices. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, in, I there, so. in, in a disclaimer to me, everything else I, I don't buy name brand. It'd be like the AGB version. Mm. Mm hmm. We all we all have our things, Billy. Fair enough. Uh, that's a, that's Anyways, it for the cast. That's all I have. Do we wanna? Yeah. Oh, do, that's do we also wanna, all I have. Um, one comment before from a fan before we get to trivia, who reminded us that Jimmy's barrel racer girlfriend's name was Mia. We are blinking on that last week. I oh, literally thank you. remembered yeah. it as soon as we posted the video in the podcast. I shouted <laughs> Mia, but no one was here to Mia. listen. Mia, Mama Mia. On that note, trivia. Let's do it. Trivia. Last week's trivia question was pretty straightforward and simple. What is Avery's job at the Yellowstone? She is the newest member of the Yellowstone team. She's in the bunkhouse. First woman in the bunkhouse. Rip finds her at the strip club, and she has some horse experience. Classic. And that works out well because she is the horse trainer or the horse groomer. The groomer is what I was looking for. And a big congratulations to, I believe his name was Cole who explains that she talks about how they break any horse they have. And he asks, can I get a woot woot on the podcast? Buddy, you can get much more than that. My man, congratulations. Woot woot. This is your day. You are our trivia winner for knowing all about Avery, that good looker, and that uh, horse whisperer, I think you might call her. Oh, the trivia whisper. correct answer today is your day, my friend. A windfall of money, enough money for you to buy chameleon coffee, is awaiting for you right around the corner. And for Don't anyone who's just headache, listened to the Addison. podcast, I hardcore just gave Billy Dukes an eye roll. But you know what <laughs> is cool? And this would be, this is maybe a future guest. We'll, we'll see on that one. But I've actually met a horse whisperer before. Oh, that's a real thing. It's when I, it's, yeah, it's when I went to Montana. 
Oh. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we can All right. Uh, this day. week's trivia question. Uh, during season two, episode one, Monica tries to get a job at the university and reveals that her last name used to be Longspear, but it was changed after her father was forced to go to a Catholic school. Why does this sound familiar? That is the question. Staff at tasteofcountry.com with the correct answer or any other comments, questions, or corrections about this week's episode of the podcast. Do you know? You should know. Nope. No, I don't. Yeah, you should know. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> You can uh, like this podcast or give us a review on Apple Podcast. Of course, we prefer a, a five-star rating as well. You can do the same on Spotify, or, and you can also subscribe to us now on YouTube and watch. You can see uh, our beautiful faces and interact with us in the comment sections as well. We publish weekly there. Next week, we're going to be talking about Bass Reeves as well as maybe a couple of episodes of Yellowstone. And we'll kind of continue with Bass Reeves as fans continue to be sort of interested in it. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like a pretty exciting series debuting on Sunday, so we'll have a lot to say about that as well. Now, yep. Addison, I've given you 20 seconds. Knock me over. Well, y'all, the Yellowstone uh, pot or the Dutton, you, the Dutton Rolls Yellowstone podcast is another compelling Town Square Media oh. podcast. Well, that's not compelling. bad. Not bad. And on that note, my laundry's done. Do you hear it? Perfect timing. Thanks y'all for listening. <laughs> I'm so done with you today. <laughs> <laughs>